Working my way through the level Pelican Down in Halo Infinite is when I was perhaps most engaged with the game's campaign. It didn't take place inside a forerunner structure like too many others did. It made the open world an integral part of its structure, and it had a rhythm to it some missions lacked. Before I go into more detail, first a quick roundup of what happened previously during Halo Infinite. During an attack on the UNSC Infinity by Covenant Splinter Faction The Banished, Master Chief is left adrift in space after being defeated in battle by their leader Atriox. Six months later, Pilot Echo 216 recovers the Spartan, and together the pair fend off a banished warship, in the process also finding out that the group is now being led by a brute named Escherum following Atriox's death. Plotting a course for the nearby Zeta Halo, Chief goes in search of the weapon, an AI designed to imitate and delete the rogue Cortana, and he soon finds her, at which point the weapon reveals that while she did manage to successfully delete Cortana, she failed in her directive to self-delete once her goal had been accomplished. Master Chief, Echo 216 and the weapon then begin to hunt for other Spartans on the ring, but unfortunately none are left alive. They also meet the monitor of Installation 07, Despondent Pyre, who warns them that there is something very dangerous contained on Zeta Halo before she is promptly destroyed and the Harbinger, an alien of unknown origin, makes her grand entrance. The Harbinger reveals that her species, the Endless, had been imprisoned by the Forerunners on the ring and that she is working with the Banished to free them, and the trio also have to deal with the ring's new monitor, Adjudicant Resolution, before they narrowly escape on board a Pelican. Considering the title of the mission, it will hardly come as a surprise to learn that Pelican Down begins with a Pelican crashing, as Master Chief and company find themselves facing heavy anti-aircraft fire. Emergency landing. Hold on, Chief. Your objective is to destroy the anti-aircraft guns in the east, north and west of the area, and you can tackle them in any order you see fit. I chose to begin by taking down the gun to the east, and I think this is a good time to chat about the first thing I like about this level, which is the way each of the three has a different challenge associated with it. Heading east, you're going to have to contend with a few jackals sniping from afar as well as the usual ground troops, but the biggest threat you face is a pair of hunters guarding the control panel you need to use to activate the grav lift leading to the gun's controls. You don't have a ton of room within which to manoeuvre, so keeping on your toes and not staying in one place for too long is is paramount. The North Gun mixes things up by throwing a few ghosts into the mix in a more spacious area with clearly defined tracks running through it, which means hijacking or finding a vehicle yourself is by far the best option, allowing you to zip around the area and clear out the banished with ease. Last but certainly not least, the West Gun provides the most conventional combat of the trio. It is a straight-up battle against a huge contingent of Banished in a medium-sized segment of the map, and although it perhaps doesn't differentiate itself quite as much as its two siblings, it being a more standard affair still works given it's the only one of its type. Including sets of encounters which are similar but at the same time different is something Bungie like to so often do. For example, during the beginning sections of Truth and Reconciliation in Combat Evolved, or the first half of NMPD HQ in ODST, both of which gradually increase the scale and or complexity of engagements the further you progress. Of course, they don't necessarily ramp up in a linear fashion during Pelican Down due to the addition of player choice. The final gun you blow up may be the West one, the least interesting of the three, but there are definite shades of the design philosophy Halo's former developer employed so successfully. No matter the order you visit them in, you'll find marines nearby you can free if you think some extra firepower might come in handy, and while there are clear paths leading up to each gun, you by no means have to use those either. You'll still face the same obstacles regardless of the direction you approach them from, but clambering up a cliff or finding an alternative route is just as viable an option as using the roads leading directly to them. As mentioned, the S escalation associated with Bungie's sets of encounters may not be there depending on which gun you stop by first, even if the variety is, but the freedom the open world affords more than makes up for that. Reaching the East Gun's controls, you'll receive a message from Escherum. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan! Bear your fangs! Fight hard! And you also learn that the Banished are preparing their next move. The 
banished are mobilizing in a big way. Clock's ticking, Chief. How much longer? One gun down. Two more to go. We are running out of time. It's now time to blow up another gun. This time we'll head north, which means there's some more travelling to do. Having to spend time journeying between each of the guns could be seen by some as filler, wasted minutes designed to pad out the runtime of the level. I don't share that view. Looking at earlier missions set in the open world, I struggle to pinpoint many, if any, examples which definitely couldn't have been done using Halo's traditional, more linear style. Outpost Tremonius funnels you through a narrow space and could just as well have been an enclosed area without it making much difference. Excavation Site is a lot larger, but not much more interesting, and again, it could have been an area in a linear experience and nothing much would change. Pelican Down is quite the opposite. The ship's graveyard it begins in, one you'll likely cross multiple times when moving between objectives, is a striking environment that fits perfectly within the level's wider context. The banished Santi aircraft guns which caused your Pelican to crash jut out into the sky, and the devastating effect they previously had on other UNSC vessels is represented visually across the map in the form of once mighty ships which are now little more than withered husks. It's also a big area, but not a massive one. In fact, I'd argue it's the perfect size. The graveyard and its offshoots housing the guns manage to make proceedings feel like they're set in a semi-open world, rather than across an area which is arguably too big. The graveyard essentially acts as the glue which keeps everything together, a focal point used to ensure you don't stray too far while navigating a space far larger than any featured in Halo Infinite or indeed in other Halo titles. It helps maintain pace as there's always a central location to orientate yourself around, and its aesthetic is one tied intimately to the situation you find yourself in. Everything comes together beautifully, and it's the part of Infinite's campaign which feels most like it was tailor-made to work within the game's open world. Eventually, we reach the North Gun, and after another battle against the Banished, you'll find yourself at its controls and blow it up. Esherim appears again, and this time speaks of his Spartan Killers, a group you'll become better acquainted with very shortly. My Spartan Killers are coming for you. It is your time to rise. Spartan Killers? Really? Everyone is trying to kill you. You even hear from one of them, Hyperius, soon after as well. Chief, we're being contacted on UNSC channels. Com's signature belongs to a Spartan Theodore Sorel, the one we found dead. Put it through. Spartan. Spartan. <laughs> I know you can hear me. We should die. Again, it's time to make your way to another gun, the last you need to blow up. To better illustrate the points I've made so far, I want to use this time to compare Pelican down to the sequence, the mission which follows. As stated previously, the first shows Infinite's open world being used as part of its campaign best, while the second is a frustrating slog that asks too much of your time for too little payoff. Structurally, Pelican Down feels cohesive. You make your way around a small but visually distinct section of the open world, heading to and destroying the three guns connected to it, which each provide a different challenge, before you finally head down into the middle of the graveyard to take on a pair of Spartan killers. Its story also continues to build over time and culminates in the fight against Hyperius and Tavares, and the scenes with Echo 216 after, giving Pelican Down its own smaller story arc while also keeping it connected to the wider narrative. I suspect the sequence to have perhaps been designed to increase the game's length. Infinite's campaign suffers hugely throughout from the go here and do three or more things style of mission design, and the sequence is one of the worst examples of it. You will spend a long time travelling to each of the four spires, and are rewarded at each with audio logs and very short, very uninspiring cutscenes. There's no denying Pelican Down does similar for the majority of its runtime, but as discussed, it taking place across a smaller area and the inclusion of the graveyard, the boss fight at its end, and its story beats makes it less of an issue. That's not to say the sequence doesn't still have something to offer. Like Pelican Down, it features varied combat outside each location you visit, and so with regards to encounters, it is at least somewhat interesting. Unlike Pelican Down, however, where everything comes together to create a compelling whole, I was left wondering whether I'd miss its by-the-numbers busy work if it hadn't have been included in Infinite's campaign. I think my honest answer would be no. Laying waste to the West Gun, it appears time is of the essence. 
Chief, where are you? Hold position. We're on our way. I'm sorry, Chief. I can't stay. I've lost his signal. If the Spartan killers find him... That won't happen. How can you be sure? Because they'll need to go through me first. With your final task being to take down both Spartan killers, this boss battle is my favourite in the game by far. It gives you the most options out of any, and the graveyard setting is a fantastic one for it. Proceedings feel suitably epic, and if at first you don't succeed, which can happen it's a relatively tricky fight, there's always another way to approach things. As you can see, I just so happened to have picked up a Warthog, so decided to use its turret to my advantage to make fairly light work of Hyperius. Feeling a little guilty for sort of cheesing him, I then took on Tavares on foot, an equally viable strategy. Like all of Infinite's boss fights, at times it feels like you're battling ridiculous health pools as much as anything else, but here is where that felt like less of a problem, because of the space afforded to you by the arena you fight them in, and the myriad of choices on offer. Once both Spartan killers have been killed by a Spartan, you rendezvous with Echo 216 for one of the better cutscenes in the game. <laughs> You should leave me here with the rest of the carpets. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. I'm sorry, Chief, but how have you ever failed? I should have protected Cortana. Stopped everything from going wrong. I failed her. I will not fail you. Prior to Pelican down, I found the pilot's constant whinging to be quite annoying, and the weapon wasn't far behind with her endless quips, but here I actually begin to enjoy them more. For the first time, their presence alongside Chief began to feel more natural, and I'd have liked a scene like this to have come a little earlier in the story than it does. A final scene with Esherim and company follows, before Pelican Down reaches its end. While I wouldn't describe Pelican Down as being one of the very best Halo levels ever created, it's nonetheless extremely well done and provides real evidence that a Halo campaign can work within an open world. Unfortunately, it is perhaps the only example I can point to in Infinite of that being the case, but that takes away nothing from the mission itself. It's really well made. It provides varied combat, solid story beats, and a great boss fight across an area which feels like it was handcrafted for them, and while I may not be the biggest fan of the game's campaign as a whole, I've a huge amount of time for Pelican Down. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a good time, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know your thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.